Maurice, my dearest friend, I dare say this ocean looks far too pristine. And those elephants and tortoises look far too unendangered. Shall we partake in a bit of environmental tomfoolery for the sake of vanity and capital? But of course, Bartholomew, my good sir. After you. Plastic is a more general term for something that can be shaped when heated. So before the modern concept of plastic, 19th century humans used parts of animals to make products like billiard balls, combs, and piano keys. The daily essentials. However, this slight amount of environmental tomfoolery started to endanger animals like elephants and turtles. So, in order to save the turtles, investors started working on making synthetic plastic. They tested a few ingredients like cork, blood, and milk, which sounds almost like a grocery list. Except I don't think anyone's buying cork from the grocery store. But, after a little bit more testing, Alexander Parks, in 1862, came up with Parksine, a colorful substitute. Once the material was finalized, combs, piano keys, and billiard balls could all be made with a new kind of synthetic plastic. And the turtles were saved. But, we needed to save the turtles even more. So everyone everywhere was racing to save the turtles by patenting their own kind of plastic. Eventually, it came down to a foot race to the patent office between the Belgian, Leo Bachlin, and the Scotsman, James Swinburne. Bachlin won the patent race by an entire day, and Swinburne learned he needed to do more cardio. But by the end of the whole ordeal, the world was gifted backlight. This had more uses than Parksign, and, like money-laced music to any company's ears, could be cranked out in large numbers. Cameras, telephones, radios, interior decorations, it had an abundance of uses. But humanity wasn't done saving the turtles yet. We needed to save the turtles even more. So, we started looking at oil. Did somebody say oil? Processing crude oil and natural gas made a lot of ethylene gas as a byproduct. So, like 20th century Factorio and Satisfactory players, a group of British companies were trying to concoct ethylene and benzaldehyde potions to try and make something out of it. An experiment they ran, that was initially deemed a failure, had managed to produce a white, waxy substance that could be strong, flexible, and heat-resistant. None of the scientists thought this initially had any kind of practical use, until one scientist slapped them all across the face and said, We can make milk jug. Or milk bag if you're a weirdo. They managed to make a polymer that was composed of ethylene, and they called it polyethylene. They get paid to do science, not be creative. Now, at this point in history, we're not entirely certain if all this plastic production was saving or harming the turtles. So, naturally, the only course of action at this point was to make more plastic. The turtles were going to be saved. At that point in time, plastic was pretty popular for being used as shopping bags and Tupperware. And, in plastic punk fashion, they even managed to make hips and knee joints basically turning people into action figures. But humanity didn't stop the turtle saving there. We couldn't stop the turtle saving there. We needed more turtle saving. So we made nylon and Teflon, which sounds like a really bad nightclub. But it's actually a fabric-like material that's made out of strands of woven plastic. And it's how the Russians make their red tracksuits. But at this point in our plastic-producing, turtle-saving crusade, we're left with two problems. One, Plastics can take thousands of years to degrade, and two, when it does degrade, it breaks down into microplastics, which are plastics that are micro. And they get everywhere. It can't be good for the turtles. Or any living thing for that matter. So after learning about all of these problems, there really is only one course of action left that we can realistically take. We need to make more plastics. Better plastics. We can save the turtles this time if we just make better plastic. And better plastic comes in the form of polyethylene terephthalate. 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 I'm just gonna say PET. PET is a sturdy and practically unbreakable material that you can keep either still or carbonated fluids in. They can also be mixed with a variety of chemicals so you can customize your plastic. There is the issue of recycling and having varying melting points because of the mixture of chemicals and creating plastic sludge. But we'll burn that bridge when we get to it. Right now, the plan is gather all of the drinkable plastic-filled water, distill and clean it to get rid of the plastics, and then fill billions of plastic bottles with water to sell back to everyone so they can throw it back in the ocean. I'm beginning to think that we might not actually be saving the turtles.